Okay, so I'm going to do the uh, Catholics in uh, the German Catholics in Louisville right now. There's a large Spanish population in uh, uh, St. Joseph's Church. So, just for the, uh, the Spanish population. Es el momento de ocupar el mundo. Viva la revolución. Es el momento de ocupar el mundo. Viva la revolución. Es el momento de ocupar el mundo. Viva la revolución. Es el momento de ocupar el mundo. Viva la revolución. Okay. I got this book called uh, the Louisville Guide. And it's got a lot of the uh, history of the architecture of a lot of the buildings in Louisville. Princeton Architectural Press. Um, 2004 copywritten. So it's got, there's a, I only skimmed through this, so I just found a couple of them. But you have St. Paul's German Evangelical Church. St. Paul's German Evangelical Church. This is 213 East Broadway, Phoenix Hill. Uh, here's St. Paul's German Evangelical Church. So that's St. Paul's German Evangelical Church. The Neo-Gothic St. Paul's German Evangelical Church is among the finest ecclesiastical designs of Clark and Loomis. The primary facade of the buildings unites into one volume in an eclectic tripartite composition of Tudor and Gothic motifs. The main entry, a half story above street level, is under a large Tudor arc that frames a set of double doors. The center portion of the facade contains a shallow bay window detailed with ornamental stained glass above which rests a one-story lancet arch with stained glass windows. The church interior has an Akron plan in which the axis of the building is turned on a diagonal which aligns with the far west foyer of the building. The main chancel area, so anyways it's a German church. St. Martin of Tours, 639 South Shelby Street, Phoenix Hill, architect unknown. So St. Martin de Tours. St. Martin de Tours, uh, I believe, had a, a bullet hole in the church. St. Martin de Tours from the 1855 Know Nothing Riots, uh, the anti-Catholic, anti-German, anti-foreign riots of the American Party, also known as the Know Nothing Party. On Bloody Monday, August 6, 1855, here in Louisville. One of several churches built for German Roman Catholics in Louisville during the 19th century, St. Martin of Tours originally had an unencumbered soaring clock and bell tower with two doors that entered into an octagonal narthex and steps to the nave level. The, the tower, articulated with pinnacles and gables, telescoped in stages to its full height, ending with a copper spire, finial, and cross. The central aisle nave of stone built in 1853 in the transepts of equal length. The five-sided chancel and the tower completed in the 1860s house one of the most authentically German religious spaces in Louisville. Growing vaults, once a flat cove ceiling, cover a rich, colorful, imported interior design which includes life-size statues of the apostles made of zinc and plaster, polychromatic marbles, stained glass windows, and painted windows all imported from Germany. The Royal Bavarian Art Institute for Stained Glass in Munich made the stained glass. Painted windows in the chapels came from the 17th century monastery. Skeletal remains of two martyrs, St. Bonassa, B-O-N-N-O-S-A, and St. Magnus, donated by an Italian monastery in 1901, lie in grass reliquaries in the chancel, a great organ built by a Cincinnati firm in 1861, rebuilt in 1875, and electrified and rebuilt in 1895 by a Detroit firm, retained its original pipework. Marble altars and a communion rail were added in the, 19, in the 1890s. In 1903, a new stone entry gable and two side rooms were built to cover the original base of the tower. Two side buildings, a convent, and a school had been demolished. The Fajar Shul Across the street, it was sold to pay for recent restorations and renovations. It's open 24 hours a day. Latin Mass is offered at 12.30 p.m. on Sunday. So St. Martin of Tours uh, still has Latin Mass, 12.30 p.m. on Sunday. 
St. Louis Bertrand Catholic Church. Um, here it is. Seeing if it actually has, uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. The uh, re uh, renovation also brought the installation of many fine German wood carvings from Oberammergau, Bavaria, uh, which I'm part of Bavarian, including the white oak main altar, side altars, Baldacchino, and Stations of the Cross. So there's some German influence in uh, the St. Louis Bertrand Catholic Church. You got St. Joan's Roman Catholic Church. Which it doesn't really say much about the Germans. Here you got St. Joseph's Catholic Church. Now St. Joseph's Catholic Church is at 1406 East Washington Street in Butchertown. And um, Butchertown is important because Butchertown is where the uh, original 1855 riots had started from. Butchertown is a neighborhood just east of downtown Louisville. Uh, the first homes in the area were laid out in the 1820s along the newly completed Louisville to Lexington Turnpike. We refer to that in that stretch as Story Avenue. The history of Butchertown. Two of the first landowners in the area, Whig Party loyalists George Buchanan and Isaac Stewart, had the new community streets named after major Whig Party members such as John Quincy Adams, Daniel Webster, and Henry Clay. In the 1850s, Bear Grass Creek was rerouted away from what is now downtown Louisville and through the area, making it an ideal area for butchers and stockyards because the animal remains could be dumped in the creek and such businesses were banned in the downtown area for sanitation reasons. The population swelled as waves of German immigrants entered into the area. Bourbon Stockyards, built in 1836, was the first stockyard to locate in Butchertown, currently parts of the original building house uh, a bank. There, due to the high German population and resentment of them by supporters of the Know Nothing Party, Butchertown was where the bloody Monday riots of 1855 began as Know Nothings tried to prevent Germans and Irish from voting in an election. The riots killed 22 people. So the, the, the riots... We're, uh, it was on Bloody Monday, it was August 6, 1855, so August, October, November, so it's actually like two months from when you would think the election would be if it was November elections. Um, but it says actually August 6, 1855 was an election day when Protestant mobs attacked Irish Catholic neighborhoods. These riots grew out of a bitter rivalry between the Democrats and the nativist Know Nothing Party. Multiple street fights raged, leaving 22 people dead. Scores were injured and much property was destroyed by fire. Uh, five people were later indicted, but none were convicted, and the victims were not compensated. The Know Nothings won the election, but 10 years later, a German was elected mayor. Bloody Monday was sparked by the Know Nothing Political Party, officially known as the American Party, an offshoot of the shattered Whig Party, and fed in large part by radical inflammatory anti immigrant writings of the editor of the Louisville Journal, George D. Prentice, and others. The, uh, the journal eventually became the Courier Journal. So George Prentice uh, was head of the Louisville Journal, but eventually the Louisville Journal and the Courier, whatever I guess, the Courier newspaper combined into the Courier Journal. But George D. Prentice, and this isn't the first time that the Courier Journal is spreading um, um, uh, racist, inflammatory, anti-foreign, uh, anti-racist, you know, racist, bigoted remarks. Uh, they'll do it later on against the Germans again in World War I and World War II. But George D. Prentice, uh, the Louisville Journal, was uh, spreading a bunch of radical, uh, inflammatory, uh, anti-immigrant writings. Said so that was largely blamed for why the riots had happened. Irish and Germans were recent arrivals, and they had comprised now one third of the city's population. So the riots happened. The Know Nothings formed armed groups to guard the polls on election day. But the riots took place after the polls closed as the armed groups moved into Catholic neighborhoods. Germans, primarily Catholics, were also caught up in the melee. 
By the time it was over, more than 100 businesses, private homes, and tenements had been vandalized, looted, and or burned, including a block-long row of houses known as Quinn's Row. Historians estimate the death toll is 19 to 22, while Catholics, including Bishop Martin Spalding of Louisville, said the death toll at well over 100, with entire families consumed in the fire. So according to Bishop Martin Spalding, there was over hundreds. Uh, he was the Bishop of Louisville. He said there was uh, over a hundred that were killed and consumed in the fires. Citizens were dragged from their homes, attacked on the streets, and then their places of work. Weapons, arms, and later bodies of the dead were stored in Louisville Metro Hall, the old Jefferson County Courthouse, now the mayor's office, a know-nothing stronghold at the time. Sporadic violence and attacks had occurred in the year and months leading up to August 6th and continued for some time afterward. Only by Louisville Mayor John Barbie's intervention, himself a know-nothing, was the bloodshed and property destruction brought to an end, including his personal intervention that saved two Catholic churches, the new German parish of St. Martin of Tours, and the Cathedral of the Assumption from destruction by the mob. No one was ever prosecuted in connection with the riots. The elected Whig Mayor James S. Speed had been ousted in June by a court order. Speed, who upon his marriage had converted to Catholicism, left for Chicago, never to return. Legacy. The riots had a profound impact on immigration to Louisville, causing more than 10,000 citizens to pack and leave for good. Most of St. Louis, Chicago, and Milwaukee. So more than 10,000 people left after this, the 1855 riot had happened. They, most of them went to St. Louis, Chicago, and Milwaukee, and a large group who left in 1856 for Prairie City, Kansas. Only the Civil War with the trade and commerce it represented halted this trend. This reverse immigration caused dozens upon dozens of businesses to close, affecting the arts, education, and charitable causes with the loss of members, money, and brain power, primarily from the German 48ers. Empty storefronts were the norm on once bustling commercial corridors, and much of the destroyed and charred ruins lay untouched for years afterwards as a silent reminder of that terrible day. 1855 also... Uh, saw scattered violence in Chicago, St. Louis, Columbus, Cincinnati, and New Orleans. Within 10 years, though, much had changed in the United States and Louisville. Immigrants brought new cultures and customs, leaving their mark in this new land. In Louisville, a site of the nation's worst anti-immigrant violence, elected a German-born man, Philip Tompert, as mayor. So 10 years after the 1855 riots, they elected a German-American. So... Um, kind of a kind of a happy ending to the bloody Monday riots of uh, uh, Louisville in 1855 out of Butchertown. So Butchertown, for the first hundred years of its existence, Butchertown was a thriving residential and industrial area. Uh, though other neighborhoods, Louisville neighborhoods, regarded as a haven for drunker, drunkards and brawlers. However, the area began declining after the Great Ohio River Flood of 1937 destroyed many of the homes there. Many other homes were demolished for the construction of the Ohio River Flood Wall. The construction of interstates and the Kennedy Interchange through the area and the expansion of industrial land into formerly residential areas. Suburbanization continued to bring the residential areas into decline until a few remaining residents began lobbying for rezoning. The entire area was owned as industrial and fixing up vacant and under-repaired houses. Since the 1990s, the area has attracted many young professionals. In recent years, the East Market Street area of downtown Louisville has seen a great deal of revitalization, including the expansion of the water park, Louisville Slugger Field, and the conversion of empty storefronts into new condominiums. This has helped spur further improvements in Butchertown itself. As many new antique shops and art galleries have opened off the Market Street corridor, currently a large condominium complex is planned near the High Gold House and the former Big Four Railroad Bridge in the adjacent waterfront park is in the process of being converted into the longest pedestrian-only bridge in the world. However, there are also plans as part of the Ohio River Bridges project to move the Kennedy Interchange further south. When it is reconfigured sometime around 2018, meaning that more buildings will likely be raised. Furthermore, a second interstate bridge, bridge just east of the Kennedy Bridge is planned to add to the existing noise pollution problems in the area. So, some things going on in uh, Butchertown. Uh, exciting project in the heart of Butchertown is uh, called The Point. This certified historical redevelopment saved a deteriorate warehouse building. 
in the process of converting it into a mixed-use development. So, uh, the Thomas Edison House, uh, Louisville Extreme Park. So, yeah, Butchertown, German Catholics. More coming up.